Hello, this is Lifeline. Can I help you? John Citizen, anonymous statistic. Cause of death, suicide whilst of unsound mind. John Citizen lost all hope. He thought that no one cared. It didn't have to happen. Well, I gotta get the world off of my back. Oh, pretty soon I'm gonna crack. I can't go on any longer. I'm here with seven children in the house and we have nothing I to eat. I came from the country three months ago. I don't know anybody. I'm 64 years old. I'm nearly blind and I'm alone. The Lifeline movement began um, as a vision really under the leadership of the um, then Reverend Alan Walker from Wesley Mission and he was essentially being inundated with calls to his home uh, from people in distress. What's the point of it when you're alone and there's no one? I got down this far to the phone but now there's nothing to do except go back again. What's the point? I received it late one Saturday night from a fellow who gave his name only as Roy. He said, I've just written you a letter. When you get it, I'll be dead. I got a ring from the Darlingham's police saying we found the body of a man, Roy Brown, with a letter on his chest in a gas-filled room at King's Cross. Do you know him? It's addressed to you, that letter. So we buried Roy Brown, a lonely 38-year-old Australian the only people at the funeral were Win, my wife and The Undertaker and myself. But that really projected us into finding an answer to this lonely Sydney. He called some uh, parishioners to his home in Roseville uh, and said, look, what, what will I do? I want to help these people. Let's brainstorm, let's think, let's pray about how we can um, best support these people in need. And the idea came up. Uh, you know, wouldn't it be good if we had a central place where uh, people could ring in and get the help they need 24 hours? And um, they came up with this idea of the Lifeline Telephone Counselling Service. And uh, then after organising everything, what will we call it? Someone said Lifeline. This is a Lifeline. Throw out the Lifeline. You know the hymn? Throw out the Lifeline, yeah. Someone is thinking today. Lifeline was born when we discovered the power of the telephone. It was the 16th of March, 1963. A new £40,000 Lifeline Centre is opened in Sydney by Lord Mayor Jensen. The centre, a project of the Methodist Central Mission, will maintain a 24 hours a day service to people who want help, and particularly people with emotional problems. My wife and I were involved. We did the training, which was very simple in those days. We were counsellors for 23 and a half years. The H2SF car one to base. We're here. We'll check the booth at the eastern end first. Over and out. Alan wrote a book, How Jesus Helped People. And that was our basic training. And, and that's how we started. We were rather naive, but I believe we helped many, many people. In just 10 years of operation, Lifeline had become global. The Christian telephone service was now up and running in almost every capital city in the country and affiliated with more than 100 cities worldwide. The 1970s and 80s saw Lifeline expand to meet specialised caller demand. And our legacy lives on. Youthline, now Kids Helpline, responds to more than 6,000 calls a week. Ethnic Lifeline evolved into a state government initiative and at Wesley Mission our commitment to help people get out of debt continues with specialised programs and ongoing one-to-one -one gambling and financial counselling support. We also continue to lead the way in suicide prevention and training through Wesley Life Force and support family and friends left behind through annual suicide memorial services. With suicide people need the patient love of those around them to throw their arms around them and say, we're on this journey with you. We're certainly making a difference. Um, we know from the feedback from people who've attended our training, who have said that often, not long after they've attended our training, they've been able to intervene with somebody who was perhaps suicidal because they recognised the signs and they were uh, secure in the process. They knew what to do. I think it's an absolute privilege to be a part of Wesley Mission. I found that it's a genuine um, focus on everybody here 
to do all the good they can, all the time they can. And I think people really believe and live that. Today, Lifeline has been established in 19 countries around the world. In Australia, Lifeline centres answered a record 141,450 calls in 2012, thanks to a dedicated team of 1,000 staff and 11,000 volunteers across 60 locations nationwide. The volunteer is the heartbeat of Lifeline. When we interview them initially or, you know, they fill in a form, it will be, I want to give back. A lot of people that, that stay at Lifeline are usually people who have been touched by suicide themselves and they've been called to it. I'm just really, really grateful that Alan Walker did start Lifeline. If you watch any program on TV, you'll, you know, any problems, it's phone Lifeline and it's amazing that it's become such an integral part of our society. The prayers and commitment of so many people has made a huge difference through this great work. Who could have imagined that a despairing telephone call to our home in Roseville would result in a worldwide mission of care?